All right, folks, we're going to start the video here, which is, well, welcome to the general here. It's actually a 60 International homemade crew cab, as you can probably tell by the thumbnail. Uh, sitting on a 96 Dodge chassis with, uh, I think it's a 50s International box on the back. But anyways, I'll link a little doodad here to the playlist for you folks if you want to see anything more in detail. <clears throat> but as it sits, I just condensed this down for you to do uh, for a complete run through how this truck came to be. All right, well, thanks for watching. We're gonna cut up the fence here. I gotta get this truck out. This is truck one of two to build my winter rig. Um, it's my brother's truck, but he's not using it. And the main thing I want off of here is the front fenders to make rear fenders for my new truck. Um, what else? And I might use bits of the cab yet, I'm not sure. But I gotta get, I'm just gonna clip the wire on the fence, get it out of the way so I can chain up and see if I can pull this sucker out. This is gonna be my donor truck cab and stuff so uh yeah let's get some chains hooked up and see if she see if she wants to come out of the earth there Got everything all rolled out, <clears throat> got her lined up. I'm thinking next month sometime we're gonna be starting on these. This one's uh, just parts. Strictly, for the most part, I need these front fenders to make the rear fenders. That's my idea in my head. We'll see if that works. So, gonna do something to make those work. Uh, this one's the actual truck that I wanna use. So the idea is I have this, I have an eight foot box. I still got to go tear apart. Um, I kind of in my head, I like those old Dodge Power Rams, but the Power Wagons, you know, the 40s stuff, but I can't find those. And I have these lying around, so I think they're pretty cool. So the idea is this with these big bad boys, these super singles. I had to put one beside it to see where I was going with this. So I was gonna have super singles all around. That's the idea. And then uh, it's either gonna be an extended cab or a crew cab. It'll determine on how much room I have left once the uh, I get the box on there. So I pulled this hot rod up to the shop. I'm gonna start pulling the uh, the pedals and disconnecting the steering. Cut the wiring, all the jazz I don't need. And uh, maybe I'll just pull the body off outside the shop here. Surely really once I do that, I just cut the body mounts and then deal with the shifter. Yeah, a couple little things. And uh, lift this sucker off. Well, that was amazing. Anybody from uh, the rust belt knows what this is about. All the body mounts actually unbolted without any problem. That's pretty crazy. Um, I'm just in the process of taking the sun visor off because the way I'm about to take the cab off is probably not very... Well, that worked out well. So, we're a little bit for closer to uh, getting this thing together. Yep, 
Hey, bub. How's it going? Well, we got our winter project in. Starting on this big boy. The big old international. So I'm gonna start, the plan here is to start dismantling this thing and starting to fit it to the body. Get the front onto that Cummins chassis. So, yeah, she's a big girl. Oh. Got a big motor, which is tight. It's got a pretty uh, spacious interior. It's got some super cool seats, actually. This makes some pretty neat hot rod seats, I think. Look at them things, eh? But it's pretty much your typical international interior. Nothing fancy. Well, maybe fancy, maybe not. I don't know. But anyways, it is the base of my donor truck. Nice part is, there's no rust. Crappy part is, I'm going to be cutting this sucker up. <laughs> Uh, oh well. Things happen. The plan is either make an extended cab or a crew cab. I'm not sure which will happen. Kind of doing a rough fit test here, and uh, this truck's gonna be a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of thinking that's about how much tire to wheel well I wanted, but with that said, this truck's still gonna be tall. Uh, I'm gonna have to rethink this a little bit. Well, it's not terrible big, it's just it's a big truck. It's just yowzer. Like the frame's got to go up. The body's staying where it's staying. But the frame will come up. I have to get my wheel adapter so I can get the wheels on the truck and then at least I can set the body to my wheels. It's kind of the goal. So, yeah. She's going to be pretty tall. But it also, like, if you look at it, there's here, so I'm pretty sure she's going to be a full-on crew cab. Because this is uh, my wheel to here. So the cab's just about. The cab actually has to come back a bit, but nothing major. My box is sitting here. This thing I can scoot around a little bit left or right. My plan is I'm taking a set of wheels, a set of fenders like the front, and they're going in the back here. So this will go away. I'm gonna have the big swoopy fender in there. Uh, that'll plug up the wheel nice. So it gives me all of this cab. So yeah, it's a good sized cab. Like I think I'm gonna get almost a whole door in there. From what I can tell. That's a lot of room. It's still a tall truck. Dang it, man. I thought it'd be a lot lower. Oh well, it's not the end of the world.
sitting on the chassis here. And uh, the wheel is about where it's supposed to be. Because the spacer I know is an inch thick. So, my wheel's sitting about right. It's, uh, the frame is dead nuts level. The cab isn't yet. So I can see from here. She's got to go down, and I do want it to go down some more, so that's good. I don't know if I want the cab to go too much more down. I wouldn't mind it down a little more, but I don't want to keep the mount. I want to keep it over the tank because it's going to have to, I'm going to have to make a brace back here and stuff. So that's probably a little high yet. Like I can probably go a couple inches lower. So I'm going to keep scooting it down as much as I can. I don't need tons of, uh, tons of bump in the wheel wheel. I got lots of wheel wheel here. Get this cab more squared up and cut these off and start building some cab mounts. So I'm starting to design my cab mounts. Those are for the tops. I'm going to be reusing these Dodge mounts because they're in a good shape. So they're going to be my body mounts. Uh, had a chunk of plate here. This goes on forever. Just a weird cut off from something. So yeah, gonna cut those start with that that way I can kind of bolt them in and then I'll figure out uh, the rest of what I got to do there I'll probably have to CAD some stuff and uh, mirror it to this plate so I have all the mounts bolted in now I'm gonna template down make my uh, my actual mount to the frame so yeah let's cardboard up some of these and uh, Transfer them over to my plasma table. So I got my rear mounts tacked in. So both sides are in. Uh, I'm gonna build something similar. There's gonna be a gusset on, from the top here down to the frame yet. Uh, I don't know if I'll do a connector across. I think these will be fine like that. This one might get one just across the back, just some square tubing. Uh, the front, I gotta basically build the same thing now as these. So everything's pressure washed clean. I already see my first fallback problem here. I go back six inches, I'm losing my air conditioning, which really blows. I'll have to figure that out. But I guess what I'm going to start now is I'll get the motor mounts out, I'll get this cross member undone, pull the drive shafts, cut this pipe. I'll probably put a bigger pipe on anyways, but uh, I'll cut the pipe somewhere here and uh, get the motor sitting where it needs to go. Well, that is pretty close to where she's got to go. It's got to go just a hair back yet. And then now I got to make some new mounts, which look like they're pretty simple, like a simple saddle mount. I could cut, I'll probably cut these off. I don't know if I'll reuse them. I might just make some new ones out of some plate. Look at all the room now. I got a fan, should be able to fit a red, intercooler, all that stuff. And this side doesn't look so bad. Looks all roomy, can touch stuff. Well, new day. Kind of my wheels mocked up again. Sitting where they're supposed to be. The plan I think now is I'm just gonna get the box pretty much situated where I think I should have it. And uh, pull these fenders off and get my other wheels in there not that I can do anything with them but they're there and uh, yeah I mean the box fits pretty good for the most part I think I have to mount it a little high just to get around the fuel sender and stuff but I think where it's kind of resting is okay I just want to semi get it squared up and uh, yeah 
then we can come up with a game plan what I'm doing with the cab. So we got our wheel adapters made, but we still need to do a little bit of work with them. Uh, we'll set the countersink the nuts some more, and we have to open up this flare flange. So we're close. We didn't have anything to compare it to, so we kind of just made them on the fly. So getting there. Got those on, at least I can roll the truck for now. So for pedals and steering, I'm going with a GM steering column, tilt, no, no dangly bits on the column, cool. And then the pedal assembly, I'm using the stock second gen stuff. So hopefully that will all work and fit. Gonna, I guess, test fit and see if she'll work. But uh, for now, I gotta basically rip out that stock column and get all that fuzz out of the front so I can uh, so I gotta get that out and then I gotta get the I guess that'd be an expansion tank or something that would have been with the old motor I had to go pull that off and then we can see where all our pedals are gonna hang and sit if they're usable where they are or not Well, I guess today's plan is going to involve bashing this cab straight so this door works. And then I guess start dismantling this cab so I can uh, start mating those two together. <laughs>
Jeez Louise, that was a lot of work. Holy Dinah. Well, the roof section is separate from the doors because that's, uh, I just have it all ratchet strapped together right now. But the roof is unbolted. Oh, man, that was a lot of work. So I think that's pretty close to where it's got to go. Like it's a little bit too tall, but that's about right because it makes the doors about the right size for that door, but in a full square, like a full size door. Makes for a big truck, but I want to be able to bring my dogs or if we do a road trip or we bring people with that they can have somewhere to sit and comfortable. I don't want it to be all squishy and stuff. That's the reasoning for the extended cab or the crew cab because I don't have a, a pickup truck right now that I can tow or do anything with. So that's the purpose of this thing. Was that a lot of work? Holy. <laughs> uh, I think the worst of it's done. Well, there's still lots to do, but that was thinking hard. Uh, just getting stuff lined up. That was the hard part. Uh, there's still like a thousand hours of stuff to do here yet, but holy. Well, whatever. The... Uh, I don't have this post in. This is just tacked in. I still have to build the whole other post yet. So we just have a tack holding that one in. The back panel's just sitting on there just so I can get a feel of how uh, spacious this cab will be. It's very nice. It's very nice. Uh, these doors don't really open yet. Not till I get that post in. So my uh, plan of attack tomorrow is going to be getting this cab situated again. So with that, I'm going to be coming here. And I'm pretty much at this point, same as I did in the other one, I'm going to slice this through. Uh, but I'm not taking any of the inside structure. So I'm going to do that. I'll just, I don't know, whatever, come back. Boink that thing down about an inch. Inch and a half, maybe two inches all the way down. And then uh, I'll scab that in one side and the other. So that'll come all the way up and then hopefully up into this section and then, you know, back a little bit because I'm going to have to build all this anyways. I could leave these doors like this. People do that. I don't like it. I'm going to uh, square them up. That's my goal. I'm just going to then just have one big vent window there. kind of see the overall what I'm shooting for here. This line worked out that it's going to be pretty good. Um, things don't line up here but I got too much material down here and I don't actually have any inner edge right now. So that's that. 
up here, like say this is working out, this is going to be square. This is where I'm learning that these big trucks and the half tons are different. This is all the same shape, but this one has this chrome strip thing. And this does not. So when we put these up, you can see that where the chrome is, it's actually just this whole fatness. So it makes for a bunch of extra work, but not a crazy amount. I only got like one door to do, I guess. I guess it's a plus side. <laughs> um, I don't know what I can salvage out of that. I'm thinking it's probably just easier to build this. Well, we have this buzzed in. It's definitely not pretty, but nothing usually is till it gets cleaned up. So there's a whole lot of weld. We got our gap, which I gotta widen this one up just a hair bit, but I did put a tack in there. So that's probably screwing this up right now. Um, I reused the door top and I just did some pie cuts over here to get this transition right, but you know, other than having to modify everything. It worked out pretty good so far. <laughs> eh. Okie doke. So I've been test fitting. It's slowly getting there. It's actually working out not bad. I'm just gonna have to stab off the drip rail up here and shave it just so I don't have this one weird drip rail that doesn't, uh, not supposed to be there. When this comes out, these are pretty much even. The gap's a little big, but so is the rest of the door, so I don't know. But I'm thinking it's gonna work out okay. So right now, yeah, I have my roof lines just roughed in. This one's kind of overlapped. I'll kind of screw it when I get it closer to shape. And uh, I'm probably gonna close, well this gap gets big, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing here. I'll have to make this gap into here yet. And then, yeah, try to tighten this up a little more. Try to get a little even. I'm gonna try to put a roof on this thing. I've already cut up this roof and uh, I'm using the back part to try to transition this uh, piece. So that is today's goal. I'm going to, I'm either gonna cut that one off and try to use it here, which I should do, but I don't know if I have what I need. So I'm just gonna use this piece and I just want the upper curl I just want this curve pretty much so I can just throw a different roof on it. Where'd my loose panel section of my... <laughs> my, my loose bits. 
This roof won't work. That one's not bad. But as I drove here, I eyeballed this. Look at this sucker. See? Save this crap for something. So this is a roof off of a Buick. I'm pretty sure it was like a Buick that was stripped here. This is gonna work perfect. We got most of the roof done so I guess the next thing to move on to is get that box shortened up so we can uh, see what she's gonna look like This thing that bugs me, I'm looking at it, and like I say, it's a bunch of work, but I'll make it. I'm gonna do it anyways, because it should be fine. Is I'm thinking I'm gonna just do a cut. I'm gonna slice this all along. That way I can pinch it flat, butt weld it, and it should be a pretty seamless, seamless seam after. And then I can leave this down here, or I was just gonna put my line and just disappear into the fender down there. Just thought of it, I had this truck. This is the other one I was talking about, this Chevy that I had. This is the one with the uh, eight foot, or no, like the 10 foot or nine foot box on it. But she's got a set of running boards inside. So I'm kind of wondering if I could use those before I go to the wood option. So maybe I'll grab one. And see if it'll work. 
on the uh, International. If it's usable, if it'll be right size. <laughs> That's small. <laughs> eh, for kicks, let's look anyways. So I like the running board, but I have things I don't like about it. It's nice to step on, <laughs> but I think in the end, I want this running board to be at least this thick all the way through. Because the way you just look at it, like I could extend the back, I can do all that stuff, that's not a problem there. It's just weird, like if I step on here, I'm just on half my toe if I want to do something in the box. Uh, the front part is nice and full, but because the cab... Well, does it make sense? Man, I'm so on the fence. Like, it's not bad. It is not bad. It's still a big step. For me to go to hit this first step, it's not bad for me. The second step feels about the same amount. It's kind of because you know how the cab comes out and then I squared it? So that's why that almost actually makes sense. Man. See, I have problems deciding sometimes. <laughs> There. So essentially all it is is some eye candy to look at and it gives the panel some strength in the middle. These are going to work or not work. Eh, I'm not too worried about it. Maybe I'll put the bolt holes right in the middle. <laughs>
got some goodies today. I got uh, what do you call it? An EGT gauge, a boost gauge, and a GPS speedometer. So my idea with this, because I don't want to try calibrating for the tires and all the other crap, is I'm just going to throw one of these suckers in. And I'm thinking it's about small enough that I can take a stock gauge. I think I can sink this underneath and I can still see my other numbers, but I kind of keep the the original look to it. So that's the idea. Hopefully it works. We'll find out. I could glue it in there. <laughs> oh, look how awesome that is. That is great. I mean, it's totally out from that, but because what this is around 60 mile an hour, so it's like 10 miles out. But that was the closest I could find. Yeah, I'm gonna lose my high beam and stuff, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. Well, a lot of suck just happened there. <laughs> I tried clocking it so now my 100 is pretty close to my 60 and everything else but it turns out there's a little pin that was inside and it busted my glass. How lame is that? Anyways, my name, uh, <clears throat> I still have another Speedo in my other truck so I'll take the cover off of there and I'll put it on this one. But dang, look at that. Eh? Should be like pretty good and accurate now. Happy with that. For now. Let's see if we can make these into taillights. That would be very cool. Cooler than the ones I bought. The only other thing I think I would like to do for it would be what would be neat would be like the Humvee, like the military style taillights. I think those would look super cool on here, but. So, I don't know, oh, I don't have the signal on, but.
Uh, it's just experimenting to see how how uh, much how finished I gotta make it to look good, or you know the look I'm going for. <laughs> but that's just straight 80 with some primer. I didn't sand it with anything. I just wanted to see the color, see how she would sit, how she looks. I'll have to wait till it dries. But yeah, clearly I gotta hit it with something more. Uh, they don't sell this color out here, so well. Nobody makes it. There are some weird concoctions to uh, get this desired color, but this seems to cover really well. And as crazy as it sounds, I'm probably just going to rattle can the truck. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like I'll need a crazy amount just to get, you know, a couple coats on. Why am I doing that? Well, it's only because this is a work truck. I don't like shiny paint. Well, I don't have anything against shiny paint. I just don't enjoy it when I put shiny paint on. Then the truck won't be any fun to me and I don't want to use it. So <clears throat> that is probably why it's going that color. Why rattle can? Because when I scratch it and bang it or do something to it, I can just grab that can and it's going to match perfectly. So that is my reasoning for that. So that's why I'll be able to do this in chunks and not have to pull out the spray gun and do everything. Um, I don't know if I'll do the high build just because I'm doing it. I do have like high build, but it's in a rattle can form. Where the heck is it? It's in the truck, I think. So this stuff's pretty good. I won't need it everywhere. I might shoot, I'll probably end up shooting this other half of the truck with some actual stuff. For now, this is all I'm gonna use on the roof. Um, I still have to do some more prep work. I'm just playing with it right now just to Because I got it. I want to see what it looks like. I have to do some more touching up with the drip rail and straighten this out a little more and da da da, -da. But uh, Yeah, I don't know. Just wanted to see what it looks like Get a feel how it's gonna look Well, we got that all in place now. Um, just need to do a little bit of body work up on these bits.
So slam my back seat in. Uh, when I do my my uh, rug there, it'll just be easy. I just got to slit it around these things, around the two posts. So I figure I'll just get my interior in. It is just about done. My dash is in, seats are in. I put those risers underneath there. So the seats are actually a pretty even height now. It's pretty quiet in here. Our rug is doing not too bad, or our mat. Like I say, I need some more of that area rug and then it'll be golden. I'm gonna try working on addressing these wheel arches that I was keep talking about. There is a huge gap in there and I'm like, it is what it is. But I do wanna fill in this fender a little more. And uh, what I have is like one of these wheel tubs, I guess off a of semi or something. So what I'm gonna plan to do is I'm just gonna cut this thing back both sides so I can make like a completely round arch. More so that I have a perfect arch and then B, I can get some heavy round rod and I'll be able to shape it to this opening and it'll have like, you know, the right to it. So I'm gonna cut this thing up so I can kind of screw the two together and make what I feel is the right arch and see how it looks on the truck. You can see, <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure if I have this where it's supposed to go, but the profile, like kind of what I'm shooting for and how much that fender just does nothing now. I want to keep it round. So this has got to get back into a normal looking profile. I'm, uh, I might just trim off that little bit. You can see this part's got to come in. I don't think my power hammer is going to be able to shrink this stuff. It's like really thick. It's like I say, it's almost 16 gauge. Um, pretty much I've used it for floors, but I don't need any ribbing because it's so thick. But it's pretty close to the same gauge as the rest of the fenders made out of, so... Um, pretty much, I'll be able to power hammer and round this part out, no problem. But as far as the shrinking, I don't think I'm going to be able to do. So I'm thinking, because the way this fender is... I don't know. I'm kind of thinking, like, it's going to keep a uniform shape, something like, whatever. That bottom needs to come in a couple inches. Uh, pretty much I think all I can do is commit to just doing some slices. A lot of welding, but I'm going to do a whole bunch of slices and then that can round this fender down to where I want. And, uh, yeah, we'll try it out and see where it goes. What's worse that happens? I screw up and I do another one. <laughs> no biggie.
I printed off this stuff with the intent that I was going to maybe fix these up and uh, mount these onto the truck. So I just printed these. But I'm actually uh, thinking I'm going to try to cast them. So I watched some videos and whatnot. They had uh, uh, some guys were using that, uh, oh, I don't know what you call this stupid stuff, kinetic sand. And they were doing some casting with it. <clears throat> so I thought, that'd be cool. I think I'll give that a shot. I know just enough to be dangerous with this. <laughs> but I wasn't going to cast them in aluminum. Well, I could, but I don't really have the proper tools to do that. So what I'm going to do <laughs> is make some of the heaviest badging for the truck ever. I have a lot of lead, so it's got a lower melting point and everything else. So the plan is to uh, make me some badges for the truck. So the idea behind it is to kind of just mash that down. Going to heat up, melt some lead in there, shave it down, glue it on the truck. Golden. I like it. It looks homemade, so I think that's cool. Well, it is homemade. <laughs>
hit up the old Princess Auto, got me one of the bigger ammo cans, which comes just under my seat, which is perfect. So the idea is I want to have it, uh, well, this can lock it down, which I'm cool with that. I want to be able to lift it, but it, uh, there's this bracket here is kind of in the way. So no biggie, we'll just cut that off. I want to zap this one in place so uh, I can basically use it as a hinge, the steel part. And then after that's done, I want to put two cup holders in here. So that should be as easy as just a hole saw and we'll find some random piece of pipe and an extra large coffee. As long as two of them fit in there, we are going to be golden. So we'll leave that for reference. Uh, I'll pop this, take this off. We got to get rid of this lip. So I'm just going to zip cut that off and uh, tack weld that, see how she fits. If she's good. We move on to stabbing some holes in it for some cup holders. And uh, yeah, then we can mount her in the truck. Anyways, first things first.
Well, there we go. One, two, good to go. Armrest down. If you need into it, just grab it. There we go. We've got stuff in there. It fits the theme of the truck. Not bad, eh? Ready to go for a rip? Go for a rip, bud? Hop in. You can do it. There you go. <laughs>